Welcome to Programming in Modern C++. This is the first week and we are going to talk on the module 01. So, this uh, particular module will uh, primarily discuss the importance and ease of C++ in programming in brief, just to introduce you to what has been happening in C++ over uh, the couple of last decades. But primarily, this module will make you familiar with your course including the objective, prerequisites, outline, evaluation, textbooks and tools. So, this is uh, the module outline, which will always be uh, visible to you on the left column. So, to know your C, C++, I presume and that is a prerequisite that you know your C language. You know what uh, the language features are, what is C standard library and what is the way to do programming in C. So, given that perspective, let me just uh, quickly uh, focus on this graph, which is uh, uh, kind of a timeline as you can uh, see from your 1950s when programming in terms of you know high level languages primarily started till about the last decade. I mean there are more advances happening and uh, languages have evolved with different paradigms. Paradigms mean that uh, whether most of the languages shown here in yellow are imperative which mean that uh, they deal with algorithm and data. So, C is an imperative language. Then you have languages which are uh, object based, where you primarily focus on the data and put algorithms on top of that. So, those are what is shown in green here. So, C++, Java are examples of that. Then you have uh, languages which are uh, facts, rules and queries based called the logic languages and prolog in uh, as you see, see prolog here in blue is kind of the leading uh, component of that, leading language of that. And you have uh, functional languages also, which are very, very interesting in the sense that they treat everything as a function and uh, as such do not have an explicit uh, knowledge of a memory. Right? So, these are different uh, nuances. It is not uh, important uh, that uh, you uh, look into all of these uh, at the same time as we are focusing on the C++, modern C++ primarily. As you can see that uh, we have, I have highlighted couple of uh, languages here, which have happened say at different times C, C++, C sharp, C plus plus, then objective C is not uh, shown in this chart, but it is a variant of C with, with certain classes and so on. So, this is kind of what we call is a C family of languages. That is, they are basically structurally similar to the C language, but has very different kinds of features. So, given this, we would like to primarily study on this part of the 
programming language hierarchy. As you can see, there are several other languages like Java, there is a Perl Python branch and so on, which is will not be uh, particularly treated here, but they we will keep on mentioning about some of those features from time to time. Now, many of you will have a question of why C++, I mean why do we learn C++. So, it is a, it is a good uh, um, uh, point to note that uh, if I, if we look into the kind of popularity of various languages over time. So, this is the data as of January 2021, then you can see that uh, there are several languages which are ranked according to their popularity and these are kind of the ratings. TOB is an organization which every month publishes this ranking information. So, you can see that C is ranked the highest with 17.38 percent of uh, usage in the in the popular open domain, followed by Java, Python and C++, C sharp. So, if you look at this, you can see that uh, these couple of four or five languages on the top are the key languages in which a majority of common programming is being done and C++ happened to be at the fourth position according to this. It keeps on slightly changing, but uh, the top uh, uh, few languages like C, Java, Python and C++, they do not really change much. So, given that uh, C++ in a way subsumes the entirety of C with little variations, you can say that this and this together is what is going to be your skill about 25 percent that is the highest percentage of uh, programming language skills you are going to have once you master C++. Further we will see that there are lot of specific advantages of C++, there are lot of uh, specific uh, items that C++ introduce in terms of programming and so on, but I just wanted to give you a glimpse about uh, where does C++ stand in the overall uh, ranking scenario. So, going forward, you must always, it. Uh, I, I often face a question as to if I know C++, can I do everything? If I know Java, can I do everything? Theoretically, yes. Every programming language as it is, uh, I mean or most of the programming languages I must say, not every are what is known as Turing complete, which means that any program can be written in them. But it is important to also note that uh, why did people create so many programming languages? So many languages are created because some languages have certain advantages over other in terms of certain applications. So, it is always very important to choose the right language and often you will find systems are not using only one language. For example, if you think about a very common uh, you know transactional application like uh, net banking or even say your uh, Gmail system and so on which will typically have multiple languages uh, possibly I mean certainly HTML in the front end with possibly having JavaScript for active front end logic. Then uh, in the business layer you will possibly have Java and uh, JavaScript for the server end embedding, you will have SQL for the back end database and so on. So, the overall system will involve several languages. Right? So, when you line, learn a language like uh, C++, you should also keep your mind open in terms of picking up, being aware about the related languages. The other point is as I was saying that the nature of application decides the choice of language. What do I want to do? If I want to do systems programming, which need high performance, has a complex behavior, then C++ often is the best choice. If I want to do embedded programming like in uh, mobile phones and so on, then C probably would be 
uh, a better choice because it also has high performance and the embedded systems or handheld systems have very frugal development tools which may not be able to handle the whole of C++. If you are doing primarily application programming, possibly you are going to work with Java with medium performance, but it is quick and robust. So, you are not looking at a very high performance there because in an application you are interacting with a human being who uh, herself is probably quite slow. If you are primarily doing web programming, high portability and so on, you are probably working with Python. So, it is low performance, but it has a very high portability, very easy to program in and so on and so forth. So, choosing the right language is very important, which is also uh, something that uh, in terms of C++ we will have to keep in mind. So, focusing on uh, C, C++, why learn them? So, there are uh, several reasons. The first is uh, C++ use is used in the development of core software. I mean a lot of core infrastructure software like databases, talk about Oracle, MySQL, MongoDB and so on and so forth. Major part of these uh, core software are written in C++. Operating systems like Windows, Linux, Android, Ubuntu, they are written in a combination of C and C++. Compilers are written typically in C++, virtual machines on which Java runs, on which Python runs, MATLAB written in C++, web browsers are written in C++, graphics engines, embedded systems. So, C and C++ cover a whole lot of core software infrastructure. So, if you are focusing on uh, C++, learning C++, you are primarily focusing on these varied kinds of infrastructure software. Then C++ have some core strengths like uh, it is fast, it is uh, one of the fastest, uh, very close to C. Uh, it is portable, more and more uh, modern uh, features are being added. C++ is becoming more portable. It is highly scalable. It can be used in a very small system, small application as well as it can be used in a moderate to very large application. Then it offers multiple levels of abstraction and we will talk more about this as we go forward because uh, when you program, you program at a multiple levels. So, you have hardware, uh, very close to hardware programming to objects to meta programs as to where you just think about the algorithm and you want something to happen in terms of the code and so on. Last but not the least, C++ is multi paradigm. You saw in the graph chart of different uh, evolutionary languages that some languages are imperative like C, uh, some are object oriented like Java, some are functional like Lisp uh, and so on. C++ has uh, all of these together. It, is, it has got a very full support of imperative programming with a strong support of object oriented programming and the modern C++ has introduced functional programming as well and it has meta programming at the same time which means that it can write, you can write programs which generate a multiple programs by themselves and then Again, modern C++ has introduced concurrency uh, features, so you can do concurrent programming as in Java. So, this uh, multi-paradigm uh, support really helps you to go with one language and do a wide variety of jobs. In addition, C++ has a large community, it has a abundant library support, so many things that you want to do, you can just use the library and C++ skills attract high salary. I'm sure you are learning all these to get a good uh, you know good placement uh, get a good job and a uh, good pay package for that c++ salaries are skilled salaries are usually higher than many others at the same time you must uh, keep in mind that uh, it takes more time to be skilled in c++ compared to say python and uh, it is better uh, to use uh, java or python if you are just doing front end applications and uh, also keep in mind that C++ is not best suited for graphics, front end graphics application. It is good for back end graphics engine where you do a lot of computation, but it is not good for front end graphics because C++ yet does not support a graphics library directly. So, with these uh, words, uh, let me just uh, present to you 
the evolution of standards in uh, C and C++. So, this is how it started. So, as you know Kerninghan and uh, Ritchie are known to be, it is primarily Ritchie who created, Dennis Ritchie who created uh, C in early 70s and for a long time uh, there has been no, uh, no kind of standardization, but uh, um, till they wrote the book. Uh, the C programming language which all of you must have uh, read and that kind of uh, became known as uh, K and R C, Kerning and Ritchie C about uh, from about 1978. And then uh, the um, ANSI standardization, the basic standardization process started and in 89-90 the first ANSI standard, uh, in 89 the first ANSI standard was published on C and ISO standard, International Standards Organization standard which standardizes every language came in 1990. So, that kind of is the base lang C language that we talk about. But then there have been lot of uh, further uh, evolutions, we have uh, C 95, C 99 and C 11, the 2011 version. I have given here a few pointers of the kind of features that have got added to the language as we have moved. And uh, um, C 18 is the latest, though C 18 does not significantly add anything on top of uh, C 11, it only kind of uh, fixes some of the bugs in that earlier standard. In contrast, uh, C plus plus start designed by Journey Straustrup also evolved informally for quite some time till the first standard was created in 1998. And uh, this is called C++ 98. You may have heard about C++ 03 also, which is a revision of the standard which was done in 2003. But that revision did not add any significant feature, it just fixed problems is in C++ 98. Right? Then the major change happened much later in 2011, when a whole lot of the modern features got started. So, it is a, a good point to note here that uh, in uh, Swam and Patel earlier, we used to have a course on programming in C++. That course, that 8 week course focused on C++ 98, C++ 03 up to that level. But in this present course, which is programming in C++, uh, programming in modern C++, we are going to focus not only on 98, 03, but we are going to take you primarily through C++ 11 and further. Then we, after C++ 11, we had some minor, uh, you know, additions in C++ 17, 14, C++ 17 and C++ 20, which is the current version. So, remember that uh, we will, we will primarily here uh, deal with uh, in terms of these different C and C++ versions and I will, when I talk about different features, I will tell you exactly which uh, particular uh, language standard will that feature be available or effective. Now, going over to give you a glimpse of the course, this is our course objective. Our course objective is certainly to learn to develop uh, software using C++, by which I mean C++ 9803. So, features of uh, C++ over C, object oriented paradigm, STL, the standard template library extensive use is a core objective to learn. Further, to go into the modern C++, we want to learn as to how software development is being improved with this modern C++, which is C++ 11. So, what are the C++ 11 features over and above C++ 98, primarily the concurrent programming in C++, functional programming and so on, better quality and efficiency and so on. And it is just not learning the language, the objective is to cultivate skills to design, code, debug and test software written in C++. That is what you has to be your focus. Just because you know the language well, you will not be getting good offers uh, from companies. You have to have the skills which you have to develop through practice, problem solving and so on. So that you can attain a strong employability and you need the hands on skill and strong employability is a core objective of this course. The prerequisites as I have uh, you already know are uh, certainly data structures, the basic data structures, a list is given here, algorithms and programming in C which you must uh, know, 
and uh, it will be good to have some idea about uh, object oriented uh, analysis and design, but it is not mandatory we will introduce that in the process. So, here I have uh, mentioned some NPTEL courses uh, which you can uh, go through uh, to learn about uh, to you know recap these prerequisites if you are not uh, familiar already and we will also as a part of week 0 provide some specific modules for self study particularly on the various aspects of C. Now, this is our course uh, outline, uh, the detailed uh, outline of uh, weeks and modules are already given in uh, week 0. So, we will have uh, as, a, as a standard, we will have 60 modules, 5 modules per week for 12 weeks and they will be numbered by M followed by the serial number, which will cover the course syllabus, the assignments and examinations will be based on this. We have supplementary quick recap modules as I mentioned in week 0 to recap uh, C if you are already not on top of it. So, it is, it, it is up to you to use those modules and enhance your C skills. In addition, we will have a number of tutorials to build in C, C++ programming. They are numbered with T and uh, some tutorials are of complementary nature, complementary in the sense that they do not really talk about the language but it talks about the program development aspects. When we run the earlier course, uh, often students used to ask, tell us how to build a program, tell us how to, you know, uh, how to um, organize the source of a program and so on and so forth, the, what are the good practices and so on. So, these are the of complementary nature, these are not part of the syllabus, but uh, they are uh, primarily to help you gain your skills. The remaining tutorials are of supplementary nature, which mean that uh, they talk about the language but not the core part which is included in the syllabus. Things like how do you write mixed language programs in C and C++, how compatible they are. If you write a program in C, we say that C++ has C, but that is at a very high philosophical level. It is not guaranteed that if you have written this program in C, it will run exactly, it will compile in C++ first of all, it may not. And even if it compiles, it is there is not a guarantee that it will execute and show you the same behavior. So, there are compatibility issues which you will have to know and uh, be aware of if you want to become a good C++ programmers, but all of the tutorials are just for your development, for your help, they are not part of the course syllabus. So, we will not have assignments or questions, examination questions on them. This is the overall <coughs> module outline. So, of uh, different weeks and you can see that uh, the first 9 weeks are focused on C++ 9803, which is kind of uh, what the earlier course used to do and the remaining 3 weeks focus on the really modern part, which is C++ 11, the evolutions of some of the very important uh, features and some of the uh, efficiency aspects like move semantics, R value, move uh, constructor. Uh, R value semantics and so on and so forth. So, and in again um, uh, module 0 in week 0 gives you the details of the different modules in every week. In terms of tutorial as I said there are complementary ones and the supplementary ones. The complementary ones as you can see will include things like how to build C program, how to build static and dynamic libraries, how to make use of the make utility which is a very great uh, you know um, utility to build your programs easily. Then about different tools that you may be using, how to reuse uh, um, programs at different levels, at a binary level, at a code level, at a design level and so on. So, these are the complementary tutorials uh, we will supply you with at uh, different uh, points and uh, you may uh, go through them, practice them, they are more practice oriented you may go through and practice them, so that you can get really skilled better in terms of program development. And the supplementary uh, tutorials as I mentioned will talk about different extensional features of these languages, primarily how to mix C and C++ in a single program, which is often an issue that uh, comes up, because uh, you are not implementing a project from scratch most of the time there is something already existing possibly that is in some version of C and you are writing in some version of C++. Now, how do you mix these programs and how to make them uh, work together? Then what is the compatibility, right? 
if you take a C program and compile uh, in C++, what do, would you expect? What are the, what are the coding styles uh, that are good for C? What are the coding styles that are good for C++ and so on, the industry practices? So we are, tutorials are primarily focused on practice that you must have uh, beyond doing these modules and doing the assignments. See, if you have to get skilled, it is not enough to just go through the language and go through the uh, quiz and examination that will give you the score, the certificate, but your real value of employability will come from practice and these tutorials are focused towards doing that. Uh, the evaluation is uh, more or less uh, similar to other NPTEL courses except that this has some programming components. So, um, uh, if you note we have a quiz every week uh, one quiz will be there and uh, then we have uh, in the quiz we have programming assignments also. So, weekly assignment score will be the sum of the quiz assignment and as well as the programming assignment and the best six typically would be considered out of the uh, not eight this is this is a typo out of 12 Pro probably it will not be best six probably it will be best eight best 8 out of 12 will be considered for the certification criteria. Now, there will also be an unproctored test. Unproctored test is of the programming kind of the programming exercises that we will have and uh, this is something which you take from your home or workplace or college uh, using a PC. You may not be able to use a mobile because it uses uh, you know uh, it will not have all the components to do programming there and uh, there will be about 20 marks on that. Then there is a proctored test which is the main for the certification, which will have uh, multiple choice, multiple select and short answer type of questions as you have already seen in the assignments. And uh, this is proctored, so we will have to go to an allotted uh, examination center and take this test. And the test will be online, it is not on paper, but it has to be taken in that uh, center itself. So, with uh, all these uh, your uh, overall uh, uh, scoring will get uh, decided for your certification. There are certain, uh, you know, uh, certain criterion given like uh, the all scores are scaled to 100 and assignment score greater than 40 out of 100 or unproctored such and such and so on is the certification criteria. But keep in mind that this is, these are, I mean, your overall structure of evaluation as well as the certification criteria are not frozen. Uh, forever. Every time the course is run, the NPTEL will announce the certification criteria, you must follow that very carefully and the instructor who is running the course uh, that time will decide on what will be the structure of this evaluation. Right? So, this is the overall uh, evaluation information. Now, coming to textbooks and references, there are many. So, what I have done is in terms of textbooks and tutorials and standards and blogs, uh, even blogs are very important, but you must know which blogs to look at. Not all blogs are uh, give you the right information. Some blogs may give you incomplete information. Some may give you even wrong information. So, in terms of textbooks, I have mentioned several textbooks and you can follow any of them, but I have also mentioned as to what is the particular book that we would be following here. Like uh, for C programming, we will follow the Kerning and Riches book. Uh, whereas, Lipman's book probably is the most uh, popular and uh, for C++, we will use the Strauss Troops book, uh, the latest standards, the blogs. I heavily rely on these blogs because these are the people who are leading the C++ development uh, starting from Strauss Troop to the creator of D language, which is also in the family now and uh, Scott Meyer, Herb Sartre, these are people who, who actually drive the language and their blogs are very important to follow. Several uh, reference books uh, uh, I have mentioned here in C++ uh, 9803 and with special marking of what is used in the modules here and uh, C++ uh, also in C++ 11. So, obviously, you cannot, uh, you will not be able to uh, study all of them, but these are just representative so that you know if you have to. Otherwise, uh, you know, most of what you will need will be covered in the module itself. I mean, you do not specifically need to go to the book, but you, I mean, uh, you will know that these are coming from this book. So, if you want more details, you can go there and get 
further clarify it. And these are references that you can use if you really want to make an advanced career in modern C++. Finally, you need tools. So, uh, we will be on uh, GNU uh, tools. So, we will use GCC for primarily for our examples and the results that you will uh, see, the outputs that you will see or the behavior that you will see in different slides will be primarily from the GNU compiler. So, if you have Linux, you will have the, the GCC in that with uh, the debugger GDB. If you are on uh, Windows, because I believe many of you would be on Windows, so it, it, it will be minimalist uh, GNU for Windows, min GW as it is called. It is free, downloadable. I have given the links here as to where to download it from and how to install video and so on. So, please use that and install it in your system, whether you are if you are using Linux, you will have that. If you are using Windows, install it so that you have the built debug tools availability. For quick uh, checkup of codes, you can use multiple different, uh, the following ones are GNU online compiler, code blocks, program use, one compiler. These are all online free services. They are like software as a service uh, model. So, you can just put your code there and check for different uh, versions, different, because you know, there are many of them support variety of different versions of the language there. So, you can use for those checking, but it will be most critical to uh, install Linux or MinGW on Windows to be ready to run your code and get hands on. Now, when you are uh, running programs, you will always need to know which uh, particular version uh, of uh, C or C++ you are compiling for. So, here I have given the code snippets which you can use and know exactly which version is being used if, if you have not explicitly specified and you want to know well, I am using a compiler. So, what version is it compiling for? So, you can use this code snippet and this will tell you there are magic numbers there which uh, every language standard embeds and with that you will be able to know what uh, particular version you are using. So, that is all uh, for this module. So, we have I have tried to give you a basic idea about the importance and ease of uh, programming in C++ with a know your language as well as uh, know your course outline. Uh, look forward to lot of interactions with you and look forward to an ex exciting time with the remaining 59 modules where we really deal with modern C++. Thank you very much. See you in the next module.